Hey, this is Michelle, and welcome to the Our Favorites Mixed Media YouTube Hop Art Journaling Edition. So I want to take a quick moment and say thank you to all of our awesome sponsors for the great prizes that we have to give away. So when I think of art journaling, the first thing I think about is, of course, an art journal, and I really love making art journals. There's just something really therapeutic about putting one together. And this is one that I made a few weeks ago out of an Amazon mailer. So I thought I would make one with you guys and then I can give it away at the end. So make sure you like and subscribe and comment on everyone's videos so that you have a chance to win all of these awesome prizes. Anyhow, so I got this mailer and it's perfect enough that if once I took it apart, it could make four journals. So once I cut it in half, it was seven inches tall, which was perfect, but I needed it to be a little bit shorter just for the paper that I was using. So it ended up being 14 and a half inches long. I then took some gummed craft tape and I just covered up where the sticker was and when I peeled it off, the paper there became just a little bit thin. You also wanna take some of the foam off at the top so that there's a little lip that matches the bottom and then you wanna remove the foam where your flap's gonna be for the closure. I took mine and brought it down to about two and a half inches, and that gave it a good size flap for the closure, and it gave it a nice crisp fold. Then you wanna bring the bag to the crease where your flap is, and mine was at seven inches. And then you're gonna go in and also remove the foam from that area. Now you wanna make that wide enough that you can fit three signatures in there. I would guess about probably three quarters of an inch to an inch would be enough. Um, you'll be able to tell as you're going through there and doing it. So I just got that down and then I went and took a Yoohoo glue stick and I'm just using that basically to keep it in place and so that I don't lose foam and it doesn't get everywhere. It's just temporary, but it keeps it together. So then I like to cover it all with gesso. There's something about the gesso and all the other mediums added on top of it. It ends up having almost like a leather feel to it, which I really like. So you can add gesso or you can leave it natural if you prefer. The gesso that I'm using is super thick, which I really like, but I remembered after I started using a brush that I prefer to put it on with a palette knife because it's just faster and smoother. So I just quick dried it all and you don't have to have it on there perfectly because you're gonna add a lot more mediums to it. So what I'm using is 12 by 12 scrapbook cardstock and nine by 12 mixed media paper. You just have to fold the cardstock paper in half and you can rip it or cut it, but that gives you two sheets. You need 15 sheets in total and that will give you three signatures of five sheets each. That's what I prefer. I tend to add a lot of collage and ephemera and fibers and that makes it so my pages still lie flat. Um, if you prefer to have a bigger signature or less signatures, that's fine too. You can do this however you please. That's the great thing about making your own. So I'm just sorting the pages into the colors that I like. And then you wanna take each of those pages and fold them in half and put them together in your signature. I use a bone folder just because I like a nice crisp fold, but you can just use your fingers too. So then you're just gonna set them all off to the side. And now comes the fun part of decorating the cover. So I'm just grabbing some random bits of ephemera. I like to use ledger sheets and old letters and book pages, but you can use jelly prints or scrapbook paper or paper from a friend, whatever you prefer. Um, I'm just picking out little pieces here and there and ripping out little tiny bits. And then I'll use my Yoohoo glue stick and adhere all of those little pieces down. And then I'm gonna go and um, I'm gonna set this to music while I um, paint the cover, um, but I will have all of the supplies that I use again in the description box. So, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments.
So at this point I like to use modeling paste. I like to make my own. I have a video for it that I will link below, but you can use it through a stencil if that's what you prefer. You can use stamps and stamp into it or just make marks in, in it, however you prefer to do it. Um, I found these, I believe they're plates for cake decorating at Walmart in the clearance section for a dollar. So that's what I'm using. I do try and steer clear of the very top and along the crease. Um, I'm going to sew along the top edge and I don't want it to be too thick there and then I don't want it to crack where the crease is. So I'm just putting it in random places on the cover, the front, the back, and on the flap. And then I use my heat gun. I like to heat it up and get it really bubbly. And then I like to use inks or watercolors just to kind of go over top of where the modeling paste is so it kind of settles in all the ridges. I just think it stands out more. Um, I usually drop some down and then spray it with water and let it move a little bit. And I always tend to wipe the drips up a little bit just because I want it a little bit more subtle. Um, I'm going to add some more music while you watch. And then I like to add just a little bit of iridescence. This is PBO Studio Bindex in Violet Iridescent. It reminds me of Mother of Pearl. It's got the prettiest iridescent of any that I've ever tried. But then I do something that, you know, I'm not thrilled with like we always do. This is um, some metallics. And I just, I didn't want it that vibrant, so I tried to water it down a little bit. And I did not love it, but... Um, you know, there's always a fix for everything, so I'll just add a little paint and make it all better. Okay, and now I like to add a button to the flap just to um, wrap it around so I can close it. 
And what you want to do is just take a piece of, you can take chipboard or whatever you have on hand. I just like to use um, packaging material and recycle it. So what's the, what that's going to do is just make it a little firmer and give your button some, something to attach to. I like to use heavy matte gel medium. My favorite is Liquitex, but I got the golden on sale. So, so just put it on one side. You just want it on the side that's closest to the button. Um, you're going to leave the other side open so that you can go through it to sew. So I just use embroidery floss. You can use whatever you prefer. This is just what I had on hand. And I won't make you watch me thread it. Um, I just do that little ball thing on the end so that it's fast. <laughs> um, you just find the, find the center. You don't have to use a ruler. And then go through from the inside through that cart, that chipboard that you put in there. And then I just tape the back of it the knot just to make sure it stays in place and then go through just a couple times and I'll go through and wrap through the back it's one of the buttons that have the little loop on the back so just go through a few times just to make it secure and then go back up through and out and then I just wrapped it around a couple times too I don't know if that does anything, but that's what I did. Um, and then just go back through, and you don't have to knot it or anything. You can just pull it through, and then I use, I use a piece of tape to secure it in place. And then cut the excess off. And then take some more of the heavy matte gel medium. And then close it tight. That just keeps it a little keeps it from coming apart and you have nothing to worry about then. Now I'm just going to take it over to the sewing machine and zigzag stitch around the outside. I did it twice only because I didn't I didn't really care for the color thread I used. Okay and then for the ribbon to wrap around the button I just use like old material. This might even be an old sheet that I got from from the thrift store. I just take them home and wash them and they rip really easy. And then I just use spray inks. I just spray them on an oven liner that I use as a craft mat. And I use some colors that I like and I add water to it. And then I kind of just take the piece so that it hits all the colors. Then I thought it needed a little bit of hot pink to match the cover, so I added that too. So I'm going to set that off to the side and work on the signatures. So I just like to use these big paper clips. You can also use binder clips. And I tend to go one direction and then the other. That way they stay in place. And then I make a little template. And what you want to do is you want to go down one inch from the top and then one dot in the center. And then if you, I have a little book binding cradle. Um, my husband made that for me. So I thought I would use it and it is much easier if you have someone handy that can make one for you. So I just set that in and it puts it directly in the corner. But then for the other two, and if you don't have a cradle, you can just use like a heavy book or magazine. I just pull it forward a little bit and then make sure it's lined up and put three more. And because I can't get it in as heavy or as deep, then I just go back through it after I've punched the first initial one. And then kind of fold it over so it has its own little fold and go the same amount right next to it. I poke the holes ahead of time just because um, I think it's easier. So I'm just lining it up. And then I'm going to take my pages and I'm going to put the template underneath one of the paper clips just to make sure I have it in place right. And again, you can use whatever you want, a craft mat, one of the cutting mats or an old book and just do your three punches. Now you can use wax linen thread. This is just um, some hemp cord that I have. Um, I liked that it was variegated, so I used that. And you're just going to do a pamphlet stitch, a quick pamphlet stitch. You go through the middle. 
I go in from the inside to the outside because I like my tie on the inside, but you can always go on the outside. Then up through the top and back down the bottom. And then you just bring it right back up through the middle so the ends meet. And just make sure everything's tight at the back. So I'm just checking to make sure everything's tight. And then I like to have one thread on either side. And then tie it off. I like to knot it one way and then the other way. I just think it sticks better. And then you're just going to do the same thing with the other two signatures. And there they are. So then you're going to take your material and I just like to cut it down a little thinner so I can tie it around the button and it's not quite as bulky there. So I tie it and then I just wrapped it around and tied it one more time and knotted it. And there it is. I did take and cut that little edge off just a little bit because I didn't want it there. So that's pretty much it. But, you know, it felt like it was missing a little something. So I have these little, they're just little metal, um, little metal plates that I've had forever, like an embarrassing, an embarrassingly amount of time I've had them. Um, but it says inspiration. So I thought that was perfect for a journal. And I just cut a little piece off of the material. It was extra long anyhow. And that's just a piece of drywall tape that I had on my desk. <laughs> so I just kind of doubled that up just to give it a little bit more. Now it has a little sticker on the back, but I used the heavy matte gel just to make sure it stayed in place. But I thought it needed a little bit of contrast and I had a little piece of jean material on my desk. So I cut it down a little and frayed the edges. and I attached it to the jean material. I just took it over to my sewing machine and sewed along the edges. So I'm trimming the extra thread off. And then I'm just going to adhere that down with some more heavy matte gel medium. And there's my finished journal. So if you'd like the chance to win this journal, just comment below. Make sure you're subscribed and then go to the next person on the list and, and do the same with them. Thanks so much. Bye.